So I thought I'd start things off with a with a short explanation of O-rings, what they are, uh, what they're made of, um, why we might choose one material over another, um, and how uh, how you would go about ordering them um, in relation to the, the specification of what you would ask for. Um, O-rings are get their name from the cross-sectional shape of the seal. If you were to slice that in half, it's a cylindrical shape, like a letter O. So, O-rings, fairly self-explanatory. Um, they do come in a variety of different uh, polymers. Um, some of them can be quite exotic. Um, fortunately, for our uses, we only need the lower end polymers. We don't need anything too expensive. Um, the main uh, the main type of uh, polymer that, that is used for sealing end caps and seals is nitrile um, and you can see that here these are the black seals I've got here they're usually they're usually pigmented black but they can be pigmented in other colors but you know all the one all the nitrile seals I've ever seen are pigmented in black um, they do tend to be fairly stiff um, the, the hardness rating of, of uh, um, rubber uh, products is measured in shore and uh, these nitrile seals have a shore rating of 70. You can get them um, in softer compounds but very difficult to find. Um, the only uh, submarine related seller that I've seen who sells them in a very very small quantity is Norbert Bruggen in Germany and he only does a very limited range of different diameters uh, in those softer seals uh, I think it's probably around about four or five uh, diameters he sells those softer seals in and they're much more expensive than the harder seals because I think they're more difficult to to purchase um, but um, but generally speaking the harder 70 shore seals do get the job done you just need to be a little bit careful about um, how much compression that you put on them and we'll come we'll get onto that more uh, in later installments of the series um, uh, silicon seals these, these are these smaller red uh, seals I've got at the back here again color uh, shouldn't be used as a guide for your seal uh, the only reliable way of actually knowing for sure what uh, seal you have is, is uh, to confirm with the supplier um, but but often than not, if you see a red seal, it's probably a silicon base. Um, but they do come in in other colours like uh, white. Um, I've seen black silicon seals as well, um, and uh, e even clear. So they, they can be pigmented all different colours. Um, they tend to be somewhat softer than nitrile, and they're more squishy. Um, but a disadvantage of them is, is that they're not compatible with the same level of lubricants that nitrile is. With nitrile you can use um, pretty much any lubricant really, uh, mineral based or uh, PTFE or silicon based greases. Um, they're all compatible with nitrile but with silicon if you use, uh, they're not compatible with silicon greases uh, it's a bit of a paradox um, and they're also not compatible with mineral based uh, oils although I have been told that Vaseline works very very well with silicon seals I didn't know that until fairly recently I always believed that, uh, that, that Vaseline would uh, would cause them to swell but apparently not um, but if you want to be double safe it's best to use a PTFE based grease with silicon seals that gives you uh, very very good lubrication qualities it is a bit expensive but it's completely compatible with the seals um, so more pros and cons with with the two materials um, nitrile is a little harder wearing than silicon uh, it's less less hard to uh, to snap or split or nick um, uh, but uh, on the on the plus side with silicon it's more resistant to aging weathering um, it doesn't tend to split and crack if it's exposed to the weather like like nitrile can uh, having said that, I find nitrile seals, if you keep them supple through uh, lubrication, 
um, keep them out of the sunshine. They tend to last a long time, I find, and they are quite inexpensive, um, generally around about a third of the cost of silicon seals, so quite cheap to replace. Um, typically, um, you know, I've got about 10 seals there, uh, and that would cost around about two or three pounds, so that's around about uh, what, about four to five dollars. So that would and that would last a very very long time. Um, so um, when ordering the seals from a supplier, um, they're generally going to want to know about three to four pieces of information from you. Um, first of all, they're going to want to know the material that you want, um, and as we've already said. It's, it's likely to be either nitrile or silicon. Um, they're also going to want to know the hardness ratio, uh, rating. Um, it, usually that will be, you won't have much choice in that. It, it's generally going to be 70 sure for the, for the nitrile and 60 sure for the silicon. But they might ask you. Um, and the other two pieces of information they're going to want to know is the cross-sectional diameter of the seal which is the dimension measured across there and they're going to want to know the diameter of the seal now the diameter of the seal is measured from inside edge to inside edge it's the inside diameter that you go by and they don't go by the outside diameter of the seal and that's very important to remember that so um, to find out the overall diameter of the seal from, from, from outside edge to outside edge you need to add on two times the cross-sectional diameter. Um, now these are metric seals I've got here. Um, I prefer to work in metric rather than imperial. I know in the States you're still working with the imperial system pretty much exclusively. Um, these are three mil thick seals so I, to get my overall outside diameter I would add on the inside diameter which is 68 millimeter plus 3 mil plus 3 mil gives me 74 millimeters. If I was working in Imperial, a rough rough translation to Imperial would be uh, a two and three quarter inch internal diameter. The cross sectional diameter, three mil, is give or take a bit about an eighth of an inch. So I would add an eighth plus an eighth plus the two and three quarter internal diameter gives me three inches overall diameter. But when ordering them, I would order if I wanted a three inch outside diamond seal I, I would order the two and three quarter inch seal assuming that they're eighth of an inch thick seals so you could get perhaps three sixteenth inch seals of uh, two and three quarter inch diamond, internal diameter so you can get them thicker or thinner um, depending on your requirements um, I would say that for um, the majority of uh, um, model submarine construction generally speaking I think most people want cylinder sizes of between two and four inches for most most boats and for those size of cylinders I would say that you want seal cross-sectional sizes of between an eighth to three sixteenths of an inch um, if you go thicker than that then you're likely to increase the friction of the seal um, plus it, it, it reduces the uh, the amount of uh, available um, space that you have inside your module because you've got to make the end cap that bit thicker to accommodate the thicker seal. Um, it's not really necessary to go to go thicker than that. If you go thinner than an eighth of an inch, then obviously the seal becomes more fragile. So I would only go thinner than that if it dictated uh, the size of the model dictated it, um, and uh, I need a very thin seal. So. If, to uh, you know, to give some illustration of that, um, I'm working on a 120 full scale Delphin at the moment. That's a very small boat at that scale, um, and I had to get some um, some O-rings for that that were one and a half millimeter thick cross section. Uh, that's about three sixty fourths. So that's obviously a very thin seal, but it's a very small boat, so I have to go for a very small seal. So I think that kind of wraps up um, O-rings um, for this instalment. Uh, we'll go into a little bit more detail about how we go about uh, deciding what internal diameter we need, depending on the size of uh, the uh, the module in the next instalment. Um, so see you then. I hope it's, I hope that's all clear. And uh, any questions, 
Oscar Wilde.